All right, make sure we're recording. We are. All right, now we're gonna remove poison. So uh, one of the things we could do is just let poison build up forever. And the more poison we have, the less chance we'll get poison because more and more spots will be filled up. So that would be one thing we could change is to either let poison stay forever or start to decrease the chance that we remove poison. But for now, let's just remove poison. So we have a function called maybe remove poison which is in our tick function and we could probably change tick to be like game loop or something i'll think about doing that so maybe poison and maybe remove poison so maybe po poison we could probably change that to like maybe you know yeah we'll just leave it maybe poison maybe remove poison let's figure out what that does and that is right by maybe poison. it's nine o'clock that's just my computer keeping me aware while I'm working what time it is. So I can tell that an hour has gone by. Maybe remove poison is very similar to maybe poison, maybe chance remove poison. We don't have that. So let's go get maybe chance remove poison. Chance remove spoil, chance remove poison, go back to where we were. And then random poison point, random element. We already went over that. If random poison point is not undefined, then remove poison. So let's go find remove poison. And now let's go back to remove spoiled, um, remove spoiled food. And we'll put this here, remove poison. Pass it a point, and we get our poison array. We filter out for anything that has that point. So it's exactly the same as it was before, is the uh, remove spoiled food. Um, and we, what we could probably do is say, instead of saying, actually, let's do that. Let's have some fun. Let's genericize this. So we're not doing the same thing over and over again. So there's a there's a kind of a law in programming. It's, it's called dry, D-R-Y. Don't repeat yourself. If you repeat code, and then you have to go edit it, You'll have to edit it in multiple places, and a lot of times you'll forget to edit it in all those places. So let's take this logic, and we'll put it in one place, and we'll call we'll call that remove um, remove point, and we'll say what the point is x remove x y remove y, and then we'll say elements. Uh, no points and oh no uh yes points and oh you know what though if we if we just pass that by reference we can't set it and i don't know a way in javascript of saying set this variable to this value there's i know there's a way to do it but i don't know how so let's remove that for now, but that's something we totally should do is take this logic we keep repeating and put it into its own function. But for now, um, we could take out the filter stuff. Um, yeah, let's let's do that. Remove point points. We will say points dot filter. And then we can just say remove point point actually yeah remove poison point remove point point and then that'll return a new array because that's what filter does oh we need to say remove that's one of the things i don't like about javascript is like, uh, not re uh, return you have to say return or you'll get nothing back um, here we don't return because we're just setting a global variable. So now we can say this, remove point, point. Nope, I wrote it there, C, uh, point. There we go. Okay, so whenever we call remove, we'll just um, call remove point, and then we don't have to keep repeating this logic for checking um, these uh, X's and Y's all, all over again. So this is the same thing here remove food, we can do, uh, no, 
we have to pass poison. We have to pass. So here we're expecting the points. So here we have to do spoiled food. I believe that's the name of it. Spo yep. So remove spoiled food. And here we can do the same thing. We can say remove point. That's going to be point. And we can say point and food. Now, we're not repeating all this logic every time. But we know that we, we've linked the two ideas with an expressive function name that removing poison remains, means you're removing a point from the poison array. All right, if we were doing some object-oriented style programming, we would probably have um, a, a poison object that would have a remove function. But I've been so long in the functional world, I, I don't, uh, I've gonna, I, I'm disillusioned with the object-oriented world right now. I'd rather work with just data and functions. Okay. So remove poison. We have maybe remove poison. And are we calling that? Back to where we were. Maybe remove poison. Let's see if this works. Oh, uh, let's set up our chances of removing poison to be a lot higher. So we can see our poison being cleaned up. And let's run that. Oh, there we go. Unexpected end of input syntax error 384. This is a tough one. Uh, start is not defined. That's a good hint, maybe. Somewhere we have not closed a function. And this may be hard to spot. So what have we... Now, if I was using um, source control for this, and I should be, I would be able to just do a diff and see what I've changed since the last check-in, but I haven't. Oh, here it is right here. So that's a bit hard to spot. If you had um, a different, like if I had a better, not necessarily a better ID, but a, an IDE that's an interactive development environment that specialized in JavaScript, or if I had better scripts um, or um, plugins for Vim, I might be able to, it might be able to tell me that. It would probably compile JavaScript on the fly and then tell me immediately that I was missing something, but I don't, and it's not worth it for me to switch from Vim, which I know very well, to something where I have to use a mouse, which I don't like doing anymore. So let's reset that. Okay, so we've got food that's spoiling and it's being removed. So there we go. Our food spoils and gets removed. So I would call that a victory. So that's enough for a video.